Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a closer look at three semiconductor companies that I believe have numerous tailwinds for the upcoming year. Normally, in this channel, we take a closer look at more growth stocks in the semiconductor industry like AMD and like NVIDIA. But today, I want to do something different, right? These three semiconductor companies deal more in the manufacturing chain, and I do believe they do have a lot of more valuation at play. They usually pay a nice amount of dividend as well. So these three semiconductor companies, like I mentioned, have numerous, numerous tailwinds. So let's take a closer look in today's episode i do want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now so right now we are seeing a lot of countries kind of creating incentives to bring back chip manufacturing to their domestic land uh, just to kind of eliminate some of the supply chain issues that we might be seeing around the world a perfect example is here in the united states with the overall chips act which is creating incentives to again bring manufacturing here in states and it seems to be working right we did see recently that tsmc is announcing that they are now building two um, factories here in the united states in arizona and this investment is going to be roughly 40 billion dollars and these two huge manufacturing factories are going to need a lot and a lot of equipment and that's why i believe there's going to be a nice amount of tailwind for semiconductor manufacturing companies um tsmc in their most recent uh, article that i was just talking about they even went a step further and told us where some of these suppliers are going or supplies going to be coming from they mentioned companies like applied material ticker amat asml lamb research and these are the three companies that in my opinion have numerous tailwinds in this space now if we take a closer look semi-org just recently reported a research of where the equipment sales are expected to be in 2022 but beyond that as well so they do expect this year to be a record high obviously 2022 is coming to an end now what's really important is what's worth to see in 2023 2024 and beyond so 2022 is expected to be $108.5 billion in 2022, rising 5.9% from a previous industry record. Unfortunately, with the way the world is happening right now, they do expect some small contraction um, for 2023, where it goes down to 91.2 billion dollars before rebounding in 2024. Again, the main reason is these overall kind of push coming in from numerous countries trying to build, uh, bring domestic domestic chip manufacturing back inland but the other thing is just emerging applications right the amount of technology that is needed right now artificial intelligence machine learning autonomous um, in forms of self-driving cars but also in robotics in industrial robotics internet of things the chips needed in in automotive itself outside of autonomous driving continues to grow and this is requiring more investments to overall expand product capacity but also improve their solutions in the semiconductor conductor market we can see right now that they break down the industries and we have some great images that they share in this report again this is semi-org here we can see this is the overall total equipment forecast and broken down into three segments assembly and packaging equipment this is usually the smaller side test equipment and wafer fab equipment we can see a majority is coming from the wafer fab equipment industry and we can see 2022 it saw a huge year compared to 2021 2023 is expected to drop but then 2024 is expected to be another year of over a hundred billion dollars being spent in total equipment and i do believe that's a huge huge tailwind for all these companies that i mentioned they go even a little bit further here in semi and they break it down by industries we can see in 2023 the one that sees the most contraction seems to be the memory industry nand and dram so right now there are a lot of kind of semiconductor companies that deal with the DRAM um, and memory overall side of manufacturing so I believe maybe those might have a harder year in 2023 we are going to take a closer look at which companies are those but we can see a majority of it still is coming from the foundry and logic and that remains to be strong and that's a huge huge win for ASML now let's take a closer look at revenue breakdown but if you are enjoying the episode so far make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience. If you want to support a little bit more, make sure to subscribe using my link at fool.com slash Jose. And if you are here, it means you are a semiconductor investor. I have a weekly podcast, a, brand, uh, a new host, 
right? We talk about great topics and uh, make sure to subscribe, right? It's a lot of great content. Uh, so let's jump back into the net sales for ASML. We can see for ASML, this is a company that depends a lot on the logic side. If we take a closer look at those kind of charts that we saw, the logic market is not one that's going to take too, too much of a hit. So ASML definitely has a nice amount of tailwinds for 2023, but also 2024 and beyond. If we take a closer look at applied materials, we can see this is the semiconductor systems. Um, it obviously makes up a good portion of this company's total revenue. And finally, if we take a closer look at LAM Research, it does seem like a, a good portion of LAMP Research total revenue comes from the memory business, over 52% in their September quarter revenue mix. Again, if we take a closer look at that number, it does seem like the memory business might take a bigger hit compared to the rest of the industry in 2023. But we can see in 2024, that's expected to expand again. So all these companies, in my opinion, have numerous tailwinds, some a little bit more in the short term of things, but all of them in the long term of things have a huge push that can kind of cause these to be a great return to a semiconductor investor. If we take a closer look at valuation, quick forward EV to EBITDA ratios, uh, ASML sitting a little bit more expensive. But again, we saw the logic side being a little bit more stronger in the weakness that we're seeing in the market right now. Applied materials and land research sitting below 15 again looking very valuable um, especially the last two that i mentioned uh, but again numerous tailwinds in this space if one doesn't want to get too much in individual semiconductor companies i do believe uh, overall semiconductor etf can go a long way as well most semiconductor etfs will have at least two of these three if not all three in their portfolio so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode take care have a good day and see you next time